So we're continuing on our study of Erevin. So over Yom we covered the first two Daph of the Tarek, Daph of Samach Bet, as well as Daph of Gimel. Just a brief sum up of what happened on the Daphim. So, um, so um, again, so a brief, a brief summary of, what we, of the past two Daphim. That, so we go like slide on, just slide on. Okay, so. Um, so, brief sum of the, of, the, of the parak. So, we started talking about the case of if a Jew is living with a non Jew and, 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 or if somebody who doesn't believe in Erevin um, in, in the same courtyard, the question is, what does that mean in terms of their Eruv? So, there's a look at whether or not um, that, that, that they can have an Eruv or not. Between Rabbi Mayor, Rabbi El Azar, I apologize for the speed, just trying to do a quick sum up. Um, so, the question is, what exactly, um, right? So, the question is, why is that Usher? So according to the Bavli, um, it's also because of Zerat of of the non of non Jews. Um, of, of, of not, we don't want you to live with non Jews because we'll be bad, have a bad influence on you. So therefore, we require you to have a nominal rental fee in order to and, and the, the non Jew you have to pay rent, rent out the non Jews rights for um, for Shabbos to make your Arab. And yes, it's going to be weird. They might think you're doing mag, a magic trick um, and trying to kill him with your voodoo magic, um, known as Arab. But that's what they require you to do because. Uh, Chazal didn't want Jews living with non-Jews. Uh, on the other hand, the Rishalmi has the opinion that it's actually uh, all based on the fact that non-Jews, uh, whether non-Jews have a Dira or not. Um, what, why, why does the Rishalmi not have, seem, seem to not know about the Xer Dirabana and that the Bavli does? It's a good question. I don't have a good answer for that one. By the way, um, the conclusion is of, the, of, um, of our Gemara is that if, you were, if, that if there's two Jews living with non-Jews, you have to rent out their space. Um, if there are there's one Jew you don't have to because the, the Gezer was done in the circumstances where there are multiple Jews because no Jew would ever think of living by himself amongst the non-Jews because that would mean that he'd be scared of being lynched at any given moment. So therefore that wouldn't work. Um, and then and yesterday we started um, we got to discuss the question of whether or not you're allowed to be more hora in front of your uh, in, front of, uh, in, the, in the presence of your Rav it means literally in front of, the, of your Rav to t- teach halakha or if while he's still alive, he would be more halakha. And we started discussing how that would work. Again, mentioning how if you do so, you're you find mita. Um, so then how do you know how does ever, anybody ever, 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 ever teach anything? You know, have you ever have a rub, you know, some makes me have another one. If that means that he's really five meat and he can't poskin anything until the, his, his actual rebbe dies. Is distance a factor? Is it not a factor? So those are all things that were discussed the other day. Um, so, and now we are brought up to death from a felon. Hopefully that's all clear. If not, I uploaded the recordings of, the, of those previous two Dathim online. Um, and again, it will still come up as you continue on in the Perak. So hopefully that'll be clear for everybody. Um, if, if anything's unclear, again, please ask. I'm happy to repeat. Uh, we'll, we should have plenty of time. Okay. So, okay. So, so now, so, so continuing, so, so now to our Gemara. So with the court, there's a question of what to do in terms of um, there's the, in the city of what's the city's name again? The city's name was um, uh, one second. What was it? Let me check the name of the city. Um, sorry, the name of the city. It's a certain alleyway where Nachman Marie or Lachman Marie Brist Brist live, and they had to have they had an interesting. Uh, Idea that Abayah suggests how to fix it. He says that normally said that you have to rent it out, but Abayah is giving the answer of the all Bavata or Bavatli Rashad. If everybody in the Satsar decides that actually we're going to let the other person be in charge, then that means, um, and, and basically we're all um, we're all giving up our rights to the Satsar and the Mavoy, and just so therefore only one of us will actually have rights, then that'll be as if we're only one, one Jew living with with non-Jews, and that's why we will not need to rent out the usage rights from the non-Jew. That was the eighth thing in my buy. And then, where everybody's like, then the response of when he, when this is told to, you know, to the people who asked him, they're like, wait, how does this work? What about the Xer Dribbonon? Right? And like, you know, the, the whole Xer is based on, we don't want you to live with the non-Jews. And as much as you want to say it's one, we, we're halakhly one person, but we're, there's we are many people living with non-Jews. So how is this okay? So, right? So he said, no, it's fine. And then, we're, and then, and then the, so, then he, and then, and then Rufuna, 
uh, the Sun Review Show went and reported. So again, now we're in the last line of Sama Kimmel on the bet. So Azla Rahuna, Brain of Yoshua, Amla Shmata Kameda Rava. So now Rahuna reports this whole this whole thing in front of Rava. And Amarle in Kane be Dada Torah Arab Melotamavoy. And then Rava said, if you've been doing this, then you completely um that everybody's gonna forget about doing Arab in that place. So what's going on here? So Rahuna said, Oh no, it's it's called that to Marvin because they made an Arab also. So therefore, they'll remember that he's supposed to make an Arab, even though the Arab that he's doing is basically useless because you don't actually need because the Arab is only one person used to it. He's using the one person's halacha control the Rashid. But they made an Arab anyway, so people wouldn't, they wouldn't, you know, in the future think that you can, when there's multiple people, you can do something without an Arab. So that's the way of solving that issue. So then, so that, and uh, Rover responds, Yomru Arab Moyok Makam Goy. Wait. But then everybody who lives, who lives in this Mabali is going to say that you can make an Arab even when you're living with non Jews, which we know is, the, is not the case. You need to not only you need to make the Arab, you need to first rent out your rights to the area. And you haven't done that. So, what, so what, what is Rahuna saying? The Makhrizin. Makhrizinan. We, they, they used to announce every week that we're doing this because because we had Bab Navazal or Shastaman Divisional, and that's why. So, so then, the, so then, the, and then, Rama says, "Of course, tell it, the key." What? So your announcement works for children? It's like I understand the adults who might understand the read the logic behind it, but for kids, they're not going to know that. All they're going to know is we got an Arab and we live with non Jews. That's all they're going to know. And then when they grow up, they're going to start making um, Arabs in a place where they can't make Arab in, and you'll have made a in, in order to carry for the limited amount of time, you'll have ruined, you know. All of the, all of the, everybody lives there, and all of their gener- generations will be doing the wrong thing. So, El Amarava, Lezel Kabinayu, Likravle, Lishlamine, Dukta, Valenak, Bemidi, Pavale, Skira, Vlikita, Vlikita, Ulikita. So, what is what does Rabbi say instead? Rather, you should have, here you do instead. One of you should become friends with the non Jew, and then you'll ask him to. Um, to store some stuff in his in, 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 in his in his in his in his house or in his yard, and then it'll be as if you work for him. And then, right once you're basically working for him because you because you know you hide because like you know you rent out renting out space for him. And then you'll be able to, and then then that'll solve the problem. But wait, but then you're going to ask, well, how does being the person's worker or uh, having his space, having having something of yours in his or sis, how does that help you? So bummer you and bummer shumal afilus ira afilikito no ten eruvo vidayo. So the answer is. Have I? We're losing you. What? You lost we're me? losing you a little bit. Okay, so try that again. Sorry. So the the eighth that was to. Lend to give to, to store something in the non Jew's house that way it is you become like his worker. And we know that a work that, that you could, if you're making an air, you don't have to rent from the actual owner of the place, you can rent it from the person who works for the owner of the, of the property, is also good enough. But there's somebody who has rights to you who is who's using rights, you rent from them, that's all that matters. So, here by lending him something. You become as if you're his worker, which gives you use his rights to his area, and therefore he's no longer being asked you no longer being asked to you. Right? So this is also the, the advice given if you happen to be um, it, it, so so this is also brought down halacha that you'll end up doing is that if you're living in a if there's like you know, say you know, on, let's say on your floor, let's say if you happen to live in you know in a uh, on the floor of an apartment building, just you and one other non-Jew. So the one option is that you can simply lend him your keys. Um, so you know, by like you might throw these for me in case I ever get my keys. And then you have, then you have a place in, his, in in their house, and therefore you'll be able to um, solve the issue of without having to rent out their rights, and that would also be sufficient because that's as if you're, you're you're their worker, and therefore that'll work too. Another Nitsa is also mentioned, they mentioned here, is Sterla Katakulakito, right? The, his worker and his, um, or a sharecropper. And we'll get into more about how that'll work out in Alaska. We'll discuss that more in just a moment. So, I'm going to lay a bye on the review. Say, Hayu Kamisha Stiro, Kamisha Likito Mahu. But wait, there's five or six 
harvester is working for the same guy. So it depends on every single one has something to do with any of them. Or do you be like the guy who's in charge and the main worker? So Amar Lay, Im Amarustira Ulukito Hakel, Yomru Stira Lukito Hakler. So like that. If they're doing this cool off, you can rent out from any of his from, from one of his workers. It doesn't mean they rent out from every single one of his workers. It means that if there is a worker who has any degree of rights to the owner's um, domain, that's sufficient. So that would mean let's say that like so um Right, so that's all you need is one of the workers. So if you apply the whole corporation, any one is good enough. It doesn't matter which one, as long as let's say one of the, one of these you know very big houses that has. Oh, so you live in a complex, right? There's a lot of people um, and like who are working for you know like for the you know like the maintenance staff, the groundskeepers, the doorman, the you know the super, the you know security guard, insert everybody there, so they can all um, you know any one of them. Would, work, would be considered to be a person that you can um, rent from. You, know, you can, you can, you, you, you know, you, you use the future intermediary, yield is sufficient. So now we're going to get more details on how that works. So, Gufa, Amar of Yehuda, Amar Shkua, Afilu Sira, Afilu Likido, Rautin Erumavadaya. So it says, even if it's his labor, if it's his labor or his harvester, right, and then they are, and then he goes into the, and he agrees to part of the air and allow you to do it, that's enough. Someone said, "This is this this, this halacha is is amazing, meaning right. So like it's correct, and you know, and it'll work out. It'll work out well." Okay. So let me so let me get some more on the stuff. Let me just quickly let me just do the rest of the local master of that. So again, so the fact that you, that all you, that assuming that that is the worker, that's all that you need. So this is also what we end up doing nowadays in terms of. For, for modern day Arab and Narlu. Um, so we'll say that we, we allow the any person in the work, so we, we extend it not just to the house metaphor, we say to the whole town. So therefore, somebody is the ruler of the rural town, being the mayor or the city police force, um, and has rights to enter the person's yard at any given at any given point. If they have a good site, then that means that that person could then rent out on your behalf, which is what they do in most modern Arab nowadays. Okay. So now we're going to go back, get back to the discussion about being more halacha. Uh, again, so this is so this is not not so much um, Arabian related, but it is going to be interesting. Get any questions, please ask. Okay, so Amar Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, shut the shut the Ravi Yain Al Yore. Rav Yehuda, shut the Shmuel. If you drink a Ravi of wine, you can't um, issue a halacha ruling, which means that it's that 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 a rabbi is not allowed to have Kiddush club because then he can't answer anybody's questions after shul. Um, so Amar of Nachman, Loma Aya Hashmatata, Ha'ana Kol Kama, the Loshatina Revia, the Hamra, Lo Tzila Dante. So Ramatma said, No, this can't be right. Because for myself, I know that it's, until I drink it a full Revia Talog, um, my my mind isn't clear. Meaning, if I, don't have, if I don't have my drink of wine, like I can't pass it. I, I can't pass it. So he says, I need to have my drink. My, I need to have. I need to have. I need to have, have a glass of wine, or I'm not going to be able to pass it. So it's like, okay. Now, so this is a little confusing. So, so now we're going to figure out what is it. Wait, should you, are you supposed to drink or not drink before you uh, issue a halakha ruling? So, Amr Lai Rava, my time, Amr Haki, Rava said, wait, why did he say, it's like, so wait, what is going on here with this tooth like this? You should drink, you should drink before you, you, you pass him. I don't get it. So, Amr Rabi Rabi Amr Hanina, my disease, Zoroa, Zonot, Yabad Hon. So when the when the pasuk says initially you his company with prostitutes waits waits money, kol omer shmua zo naeh bezu eno naeh mabed hona shal torah. So basically, you can't say that any that any statement of Torah is less nice than another one, because um, if so, you will you are you are losing the fortune of Torah, the you know the wealth of the like. Because you can't say that, like, that you can't buy Torah in such a way. So, Amr Lai, Hadri Bay, the monk once said, actually, um, you're right, I, um, I'm going to retract what I said. So, you're right, even though I say that, you know, um, that, like, you know, I, I don't have a full, I don't have to probably have a drink, I drink, I received what I stated, really nobody should be drinking while issuing all the statements. 
So an hour long tour on the topic of alcohol. Um, we're going to discuss a bit more about that. So Amar Rabba Baruhuna Shatui Ani Palel Divi Palel Kilato Tzila. So Rabba Baruhuna says, if you drink, you're not supposed to daven, but if you already daven, it works. So then on the other hand, we have again. So Shatui would mean that you that you have drunken a little bit. On the other hand, we have Sikor Ani Palel. But a drunkard, right? Meaning when you're really drunk. You should you should dive in the palel piloto toeva. But if you're really drunk, then right, then you're should not only should you dive in, but if you were to dive in, then you're diving is an abomination, which is pretty bad. So now the question is, eki dami shatu, eki dami shikur, right? So what's the difference between somebody who simply had a drink, who was drunk in a little versus drunk? Like where's the where's, where's the line? So if you had the rabbi ami bar shumni or of menashe bar riyamia migifti. Habukai, Mipatre, Adade, Amabra, the Nahar Yufti. Okay, so now we're from Rabba Bar Shimri, Amrash, Bar Yumi, from Yifti, were, you know, like talking to each other by the ford of the river, of the Yufti River, and they said, Amru Kolchat, Minam, Lama Milta, Delosh, Mia, Havre. Their wish is say something that his fellow hasn't heard um, yet, you not know, say a little. I'll tell you before we leave. We're losing you again, Mabe. Sorry. Okay, so again, so the story there is talking about uh, so when the story about being drunk and not uh, and what, what, is the, what is the boundary being drunk or not come up this came up when uh Rabbi barab barshuni and ravnash bar um were um about a part ways and they said and they quoted the statement of mari baruhuna who said that when you depart from somebody you should always mention a tvar halakha and by doing so you'll be you'll remember each other so and that's what, what that's what they did. Now here's the Dvar Halakha they spoke about, which is going to be the Dvar Halakha that, that we want to hear about. So what is the... So we're following up on the question of what is drunk versus just having had a drink. Right? What's the boundary to the two of them? So Patachad Bahamar, Hekidami Shatui, Hekidami Shikur. So one of them opened and saying, what is between if you had a drink versus drunk? Shatui kol she'achol l'dabeir l'bnei ha'melech. The Shikur kol she'en yachol l'dabeir l'bnei ha'melech. So what do we how to differentiate that when, when you had a, somebody had a drink that you know you like you know you had a drink but you wouldn't feel you feel comfortable lobbying before a king talking to you you wouldn't feel uncomfortable because like you still your wits about you just yeah you had a drink and that's okay. On the other hand, a drunk is somebody you wouldn't feel comfortable going in front of royalty because you wouldn't feel you know you had your, your wits about you and that'd be the problem. So that that's how you don't get too drunk and not drunk. The Padaki the other one opened up and said, I'm not Zeke. So the mother went a different halacha. What do you? How would you? Um, if you take possession of a not of a somebody who, 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 who converted who, who converted their property, and you want to make sure to keep it after they pass away, um, as to how would you do? So, so. You cock the hand and say for Torah. With the amount of profit you made from this, uh, from, 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 the, from the purchasing of the land, you should buy a say for Torah. Amar Shei said, Afilu Baal Benefsa Ishto. So similarly, um, you should, um, if you want to make sure, let's say, that you don't lose your rights to, uh, um, you know, to your estate, um, in, 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 in the divorce settlement with your wife, you should make sure to, to buy a say for Torah with, them, with, with the profits. Um, okay, and it's inter- inter- interesting advice there, but okay, right? So they're saying that if you want to make sure that you don't run any problems um, looking down the road, you should make sure that, you, that you're that you involved in Torah throughout the whole process. Okay, and now we're on Samoth al uh, fourth word. So, Rava Amar, Afil Avad, um, Iska, um, Barava. So Rava said, even if you went into a a business venture made a lot of money. You should also make sure to invest in the writing of a statement Torah, because that'll mean that you'll end up keeping your profits and they won't all um, uh, disappear. 
Rapapa Amar Afilu Matza Metzia. Um, and Rabbah says, even in the case of if you found a, um, if you, if you found, if you had a chance to find a nice sign, like, you know, you stumbled across. We're, we're losing you again. Nice Sorry. Did I cut out again? Okay, sorry. Um, you froze. I froze. Okay, one second. Okay, so I'll go back a bit. Sorry, Rabbi, okay. I think you have to back up a little. You, you, you froze too, so. Okay, so okay, so we're talking about advice. So the second person's advice was, how do you make sure that you make profit um, and that you're gonna keep it? So for instance, let's say if you had purchased something from a from a from a from a, from a convert, that you want to make sure that you hold on to this land after it passes away. The reason why this is considered to be a very valuable possession is because normally land will revert back to its owner after at the Yomel, in the case of a gear. That would not be the case. You get to keep it if you bought, if you bought land over the air. So that's why you want to make sure that you get to keep the land out of your by Yovel. So they say you should invest some of the profit you make from that, from that property, from that land, invest it in the Sefer Torah. Similarly, Roshesha has stated that Baal Benesha is so similarly you should do so with, with the estate that, that, that you get from your, from your, from your wife's um, dowry. You want to make sure that you hold on to it, that you don't end up losing it in divorce or some other unfortunate circumstance. You should make sure to invest in um, in in Sefer Torah. Similarly, Rabbi says that any type of good business venture, you should also donate. You should also invest in uh, and invest in Sefer Torah. And similarly, Rabbi says, same thing. You found a matzvah. You found a you just had to find, let's say you know you stumbled across a pot of gold. You stumbled across you know you found some nice precious stamps on the street. Also, you should invest some of that money into getting a Sefer Torah. And Rabbi Nachman says, a few of the to it. So, and if that one says, no, not even that, even you could you do so for the writing of Tefillin, it's also considered to be a valid investment of in the funds in order that way all of your promise will be um, uh, blessed and for the better. Um, so, I figured out the good time to mention that uh, the Bayan is having a uh, having a, fundra- a, a, fundra- a fundraising effort. So, if anybody would be uh, would, would like to contribute towards that, um, the link can be found on the Bayan's website. Okay. And how do we know that you're supposed to donate towards um, uh, uh, towards um, yeah, towards uh, different kodesh, towards uh, things that are only based on the verse of Vayidori Yisrael Medar, that when um, when Israel are conquering um, uh, um, uh, the kind of nations after they had, after they had, um, after, they had after, they, after they had captured a uh, after they captured a man servant. So when the Jews decide they're going to do to, to in order to ensure their victory, that they would do, they would donate the spoils to God, to make a tarim. So right, so this swear that they did was made. Ensure their ensure their their success in their ventures. In this case, in this case, their venture was a uh, military venture. So just like I hope, I hope that in Israel then, it'll hopefully help us all out now. Okay. So, um, Amar. Okay. So now we're back to this discussion of wine. So Amar Amar Rami Baraba. Uh, meal, the shana told you, my big in at the eye. Right, so now we're going to drink and dive in or drink a coffin. So, or to go drink a tea shalaha. So, now we're going to say that how do you solve the issue of being drunk? So, you should walk for a meal, again, about a close, about a kilometer. Um, or if you drink, so, or if you sleep a little bit, that'll also get, that'll also take the edge off of your, off of, off of your being, uh, drunk with wine. So, no. Oh, you lost the reading on a case. I'll repeat that when I just read. No, you're freezing up again. Right? So, walking through a distance. Of the mill, getting over a kilometer, uh, like you know, 10 a nice 10 minute walk, um, or you're getting a nice, getting a nice, a nice, uh, a nice, a nice, a nice snap in, 
we'll get rid of uh, get rid of the feeling effect of alcohol. So in this so Rabban the name of Rabban Rua, but this is only the case if you only had a little drink, if you only had a glass, of, you only had a rabbi of wine, would that be the case? But if you drink more than that, actually, all these devices would actually make it worse. It would make you, it would make you the, the walking around would make you. Or thinking now would actually make you have a worse um, um, ability to handle your liquor. So, where do we know that walking around is going to help you with deal with your hang, deal with your being drunk? Tanya, we're not going to this. is the opposite of something else. Shehaya Rokeb al Hamor, Haim Halet, Meak al Abzid, Haim Rabi Eloi, Halet al Haraf. So we had a story of Rebekah Leal that he was riding on the donkey and he was going from Akko to Ziv, um, got not stuck along with um, his, you know, this journey and Rebekah Leal was walking behind him. Matzak Buskin Madera, then they found a uh, local brand on the road and Amar Lo, and then Rebekah Leal said to you, Rebekah Leal, um, Tol Buskin Madera, and Rebekah Leal and, and, and Rebekah Leal told him to get pick up the, the bread from the road. Um, Monsa Goyakan, Amarlo, um, the guy told Moskin Halalu Meilai. The Rebbe Leal is a part of Nadu and told him, uh, um, guy, take these loaves from Eli. Because that's the that was, that was Nadu's name, or it's, um, and that's what he was saying. So, okay, so, Nitafelo Rebbe Eli. So, and then now, so then after uh, Rui Lai gave the bread to the Nandu, they could see the bread on the jam together. So, Amarlo, the hand got on us. So then Rui Lai asked the Nandu, where are you from? Amarlo, the Aron Shobor Borgani. He said that I am from the city of Borgani, uh, of, of, of the city that's got a lot of, of, of guards nearby. I get the support of Elkos um, that live nearby. I think it is for us. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that. Bros, gotta, go back, gotta go back to the seconds. Can you still hear me? Everybody hear me? Okay, okay. No. Okay, so again, so then this uh, so Ruby Lai is giving over the bread to this to this not the uh, new okay. that he's from the city of Garden. No. So Omash Mahan, he asked what's your name? Oh guy He said, and the Gentile said, My name is Oh Guy. And then like, you know. I realized, like, wait, how on earth did Rabbi Leo know this guy's name was some guy? He's like, what? So, Clue make your son of Rabbi Leo, Alam, Omer Lo So he says, wait, did you never know from before? Like, so, like, how did they know some guy? And then, so, and then the answer is, is that, like, the guy said, nope, I've never met Rabbi Leo in my life. Looks like a nice guy, but I never met him. So he's like, so now I realize, like, wait, how did he know your name was? So, both are Shah, Lamanu, Shakim, and Rabbi Leo, Baruch Kodesh. So we know from there that Rabbi Gamliel had, had divine inspiration, and therefore that's how he uh, managed to um, know the guy's name without having said anything. So we so learned from the Mount of Ozasha, and then we learned three things from the story. No, no, you're barely legend. Ill- what? what? Oh, I cut out again. Sorry. Okay. So basically. So the story goes as follows. Yeah, it's a Ruby Lane, Rick and Leo are going on a journey, they pass by a couple of loaves of bread, and they and then Ruby then Leo tells uh Ruby Lion pick up the bread and go hand it over. He says notice there's a Nanju walking by, so they go give it to the Muff guy over there. And then Ruby Lion takes the bread, brings the Nanju, and says, Yeah, he says, here you go. Um, and then asks, you know, hey, what's your name? And he says, I look at it, he's like, and where you're from? He says, I'm from Burgundy, my name's Mav Guy, and and then Ruby Lion's like, wait. How did you know? Like he's like, wait, do you, are you friends with Rambam or something? Like, how did Rambam know who you are? And then the response being is that nope, I didn't know Rambam from before. Rather, it, so then, then the conclusion is that that must be Rambam had a divine inspiration at that moment, and that's how he managed to get the name correct. Okay, so now at that exact time we learned some things out as well. Lamanu shahok of Lamanu sosadvarim, right? So Lamanu Lamanu mekhekiv. We learned three things from the story and, um, that happened with Rabbi Gamliel. And it, 
So what, what do we learn? Lamanus ema birnal oklum. We learn that whenever you pass food on the way, right, you should not um, leave it there. You should actually pick it up because for all because there's very good chances that you'll find somebody who needs it who needs it shortly. Um, whether we should recommend that nowadays, um, I'd say if, if the food looks untouched, let's say you pass by a, a something that's wrapped and packaged, that might not be the case. But now if you pass by something that looks like it's garbage, I would recommend not to touch something that for obvious safety reasons. Um, but again, if it's actually packaged, you may as well. You can even if you keep it if it's not kosher, you can always you can always uh, give it to somebody else, like happens in this case. Vomanu shalkan achareh rov over drachim. So we also follow the majority of travelers. So since most not people pass this error on non-Jews, therefore he assumed that the food was 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 not kosher, and therefore it was brought by non-Jew. Vomanu she fomitzo shalkoi achar achar veza mutar bana. We also learn that the fomitz of a non-Jew after pass out is mutar. Because if you find a bread on the side of the road, you don't know what it's from. And presumably the story happens sometime shortly after Pesach. You don't know how long it's been there for. So so this must be that um, you wrote that in non that, that the comment being an issue is only if a Jew owned it, not if a non Jew owned it. Okay, so that's why we are we are all lucky enough to oh, I think already froze. Um Everybody hear me? The cloud now, hopefully everything will work. The uh, my phone will get back to working again. Okay, so um, we we have, okay, so eight minutes. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to finish it off that time. If not, um, We'll see. I apologize if, if, if the recording gets lost. Well, that's what happens when I get cut off in the middle. So here we go. So so, so back to what we're talking about. Again, the story. We have a story going on with. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I guess the Zoom crashed. Okay. That's what happened. Okay. Anyways. So. Um, so the issue we're talking about is is the case of Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Eli. We're going from Akko to Ziv. They pass by some bread. They uh, told to be allowed to pick it up. They give it to Nanju, whose name was 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 um, uh, Mavrai, and and, it was, and then you know somehow we're going to be knew his name, decided never they never met before, which was very impressive. Um, then we got to the, and then we learned three things. We learned that you're never you're always supposed to pick up food when you pass it on the road. We all um, we also learned that you're supposed to. Um, that you assume whatever you find on the road follows the majority of the travelers you have to be passing. We also assume that um, that any food that is found will be having been belong to the um, most recent the most recent uh, sorry. And also we learned that um, what was the last one is that um, is that you're allowed to benefit from the not from the comments of Ananju after. Pesach, because this story happened shortly after Pesach, and odds are the bread may have been there for a while, um, or or baked, been baked prior. So, so, so therefore, this teaches us that we're allowed to uh, benefit from the uh, chametz of non-Jews after Pesach, as opposed to the chametz of Jews, which you cannot benefit from. In fact, some of the stukim have, were of um, as, um, were of the opinion that any leaven by only even by non-Jews. Um, would have been a would not have been allowed to have been eaten. We don't pack them that way, as everybody knows when they go right after uh, Pesach to the non-Jewish markets to go enjoy their um, uh, their very nice chametz. Okay, now so now came on Shigiel Chaziv. Now once we arrived in the city of Chaziv, somebody came to ask Rabbi Gamliel to um, to undo his his uh, nether, right? To do hatar hatar for him. So Omer Lazet. Um, Shemo, Plum Shachinu, Ravit, Yain, Haitaki, Omer Lohin. So the Rigamliel asked Rabbi Eli, did we, did we drink, you know, a, a, cor, a, a Ravit of wine earlier? And, and Rabbi Eli says, yep, we drank a Ravit. So Omer Lohin, Ken, Yitayel, Afarenu, Ajibig, Yenenu. So then he told the person, he asked about the child, give us a minute, we'll go for a quick walk, and then, you know, that'll, 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 that'll calm our heads, and that's why, then I'll be able to answer your child. Just, you know, right now I can't. So that's what he did. They went, and then he was able to, um, um, and then he was able to finish uh, um, to Pascha. 
Sorry, one second. Um, okay, again, so we have to cut off in four minutes. Uh, okay, so Vitaya al Karim social million, so they walked for three more mil. I had to yield some old child store. And they went for another uh, three mil until they reached the, the, the uh, donkey of the ladder of tire. Um, and then came to Gila Soma de Tsor, Yara, Yurugamlil, Melchamor, Bitatev, Bitatev, Bitilo Nidro. And then when they reached Soma de Tsor, Yurugamlil got off his donkey, put on his talis, sat, and then would mock his net there. Parbid Vern, Lamont, and Bodo Chadwin, a lot of things based on the story. I apologize, I'm going to run through this really quickly because I have about um, only have four minutes. Um, so again, I apologize, it's very quick, um, but uh, time constraints. So, so. Right. So, what did we what did we learn? La Manu Shaviyah, Yanni Talk, Mishaka. We learned that the that the that Italian wine is very strong and gets you drunk. La Manu Oyore. We learned that a drunk person should not rule in matters of halacha or of, of any sort. La Manu Shaderek was digging the yain. We learned that the journey um, gets rid of the edge of alcohol and allows you to pass it again. La Manu Shaim of Dirin Adarim, Lo Rakub, Lo Malik, Lo Amed, El Yoshe. We also learned that the person who is being mocked in the house there should be sitting down. Not walking, not riding, a, not riding an animal, but simply sitting, um, and that and that's what we do. Okay, Johnny Nia slows the meal. And wait a minute, wait. They said they lost three mil. Johnny Nia, they talk. We do a shocker thing. You're right. Um, we learn that walking is good. Just here, you need to walk. It takes more because it because because Italian wine is very strong. Amar of Nakwan, Amar of Baravu, Alo Shadam, Alo Shadam, Shadam, Ravi, and Abal Shadam, Yatim, Ravi, Tosh again. Derech Torato, Veshen, and Mishar Kito. But we didn't not want to say that of Rabbi Ravua that if you drink a Ravius of wine, if you drink more than Ravius, you're going to feel it will feel, 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 feel getting worse. And you're saying here that strong um, Italian wine isn't going to be it isn't going to do the same thing. And Rabbi Shani, no. The answer is, is that they're riding on a horse, so therefore the rate of of um, of, of undoing your drunkenness is lower. And that we do three mil. Shani. And similar to the question of the different types of wine is different. The answer is is that Yes, if you were to have ridden ordinarily, it would be a problem. If you went up your circuit could have walked or slept in realm, but here it would be fine because here, because because riding is a more gentle way of fixing the alcohol, and therefore it won't be a problem. Any of this really show that riding is magical? I'm sorry, what do you mean by talking about riding is so good? But we said, or sorry, but this is on the quick case of being Mefer Nedar or doing a Darim. So it says you can be, you can be an old vow while you're walking, riding, or standing. Tanai, the brighta, and it's sorry, it's a it's a machloket tanaim. The eagle mandamar posim macharata. So basically, it's that there's machloket tanaim. Similarly, whether or not you need to have um, lead, lead with um, an omen or not. The eagle mandamar in macharata. Similarly, the question is, do you have to open with an omen or not? Damar rabba barakana amar biyochanan. My patak leir ring amliel ahu gavar din ring amliel one say. Yes, both have the Makara, Karev, Lashon, Hawaii, Marpe, that there is one of the other in the sword, and the tongue of the wise is, is it will make you healthier. Call both ever oil of the Kro, the Kher, whoever talks is worthy to worm to that sword. What? I like Lashon, Hawaii, Marpe. Rather, that if you listen to the words of the sages, you'll be better off. Amar, Amar, Mar, if it ain't my viewer in all of Oakland, and you don't pass me, it's going to come past by food. Amar, be Oakland, on Mishim, Rabishim, and Banyokai, Loshan, El Bador, to return him, shame, but not Yisrael, for itself, of Safid. So when we say that you wouldn't do that, that's back in the good old days when people didn't just make magic, when people didn't make magic, you should not do anything funny with your food. Um, okay, um, so I think we're going to end here. Uh, I guess we discussed some of the halakhot of being ma'avirim or al-nitzvot. Um, we just, uh, about whether or not you eat food or uh, about whether or not you could, uh, when you pass, um, again, when, when are you, about some laws of being drunk and how you get you get better than being drunk. Again, I sincerely apologize for the um, speedy conclusion and for being cut off in the middle, but hopefully I will start off by reviewing this little, last bit tomorrow. And I wish everybody a, a, a happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. sure. Sure. Thank you.